Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood and I'm delighted to be joined with Jen Franco with his fantastic movie, Jerome. Let's take a look at the clip. Oh, well, you know that guy that's always outside? Mm -hmm. The cops came and they're messing with him. Is that at the halfway house? Yeah. You need to leave that man alone. He don't be bothering nobody. <sighs> Eat your food. All right, and don't have no girls up in my house. I'm 17, mama. Yeah, I remember 17. That's what I'm afraid of. Um, I'm so happy to be with you. I always love being in your energy because you just fill up the room. Um, but thanks so much, man, for bringing Jerome to us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for watching it, enjoying it. I, I've got so many questions. I genuinely loved your film so much. But for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Um, Jerome follows this young man named Jerome. Uh, that is deeply wanting to reconnect with his long absent father and finds that his mother's enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a brilliant idea. There's so, much, there's so much complexity of just emotion and feelings in this film and it's, it's all there for us to enjoy as, a, as an audience member. Um, it's a very deep story and I'm so glad you brought it to the moving image, but for you, where did the inspiration come for you in, in, in deciding to turn this idea into a film? Uh, you know, it was a few years back, I had, I had gone to a museum, it was in Salt Lake City, and I'd seen Titus Kafar. if you don't know Titus Kafar, you look up Titus Kafar. Titus Kafar is like out of control. And he had this project called the Jerome Project. And uh, one, I immediately, uh, to kind of pay homage to him and that work and how deeply it affected me, I, I titled the, the titular character after that project, mm. Jerome. Um, but. The, the project spoke volumes about, yeah. you know, incarceration on black bodies, yeah. on men. Um, to me, it, it was just yelling legacy, legacy, legacy. Yeah. Uh, and me, someone who's had a father that was incarcerated that I didn't grow up with, uh, I think it, it just resonated. It's, yeah. some, it's a question that I ask myself all the time. You know, yeah. I have a son and I go, how am I messing this kid up? Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and I think that that's what we do. We, yeah. we imprint and boys always look for their dads. Yeah. Whether uh, they're around or not. I mean, you know, you, you brought up so many conversations. I mean, incarceration in this country is, is, is disgusting, you know, particularly, you know, on, on black and brown men as well. Oh, it's awful. It's just the worst. And, you know, this unfortunately is like, one of many examples of what exists in this particular country. But you bring focus in on the mother and the son. And I, I mean, it was, it was a, an unbelievable like characters that you created, but a, a, an incredible relationship that evolved on camera. Um, before we get into the details of that, tell us a little bit how you brought your cast together. Uh, it's funny, um, I, Elias, who plays Jerome, I had worked with his mom in, um, in a very small, it wasn't even really a project, it was more like an exercise mm -hmm. over at the American Film Institute, at AFI Conservatory. Yeah. And um, while there, she was like, you would love my son. And you know, you get that all the time. You're yeah. like, you know, you, you're like, it's, everybody's like, you'll love this person. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and there's so many talented people out there. You never know when you're gonna actually love somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, she introduced me to her son. He, he auditioned for kind of like the first version, the first iteration of it, which wow. I did over at school. And she was right. I kind of, I like, I, I, there was something in his eyes. Um, and I, I waited to the last second. We were gonna shoot like 17 hours before, not this version, but the first iteration. And I hit him up and I was like, hey man, I, 17 hours before. And he goes, what? crazy. And, <laughs> and, and he goes, yeah, I'll be there. And, uh, and he was a rock star. And I knew the minute we started working together that there was so much there. 
I couldn't take my eyes off his performance. I mean, he's a yeah. rising star, yeah. so she was right, wasn't she? Yeah. She was right. She <laughs> but was no, right. seriously, I mean, to go through that, or just even that internal emotion that he gave us on camera was, you could tell there was so much within his eyes and body language, what he was kind of emotionally going through. Then put that alongside the mom, like, wow. Oh my, I mean, let me tell you this. Over at Bronze Lens Film Festival, yeah. which is amazing, they like both got Best Actor nominees. I yeah. mean, Elias is, up against John Leguizamo yeah. in the Best Actor category, which is crazy to me, yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? He's like this kid that is like one of his first projects ever was Jerome, yeah. and uh, man, it kind of makes me emotional. No, I know, I know, I make it, no, seriously, I, I, I you know, there's, there's not many films where, you know, there's on every level, it was just a really, really good film from, from the cinematography, from the acting, from the directing and how you directed the film. And really the script was just also like captivating. Um, I can't even imagine what it was like, but I mean, there was so many scenes in there. I mean, you know, fil is it easy filming a basketball scene? What is that like? <laughs> Basketball <laughs> scenes, man, they're tricky. It's not, it's not easy. It's not it's easy. It's fun, though. Yeah. You know? How do you, how do you work as a director when the, when, the, when the levels are this high in terms of what each character is going through? How do you work with your actors? How do you get them to deliver that? What's that experience like for you as a director? Uh, you know, I think I just give them a lot of space. That's like the best... I know it's kind of a trivial word, space, yeah. but space can mean a lot of things. Yeah. And um, for one, I, I personally am not a huge fan of, um, of having a lot of flags everywhere. So I, yeah. I try to have a conversation with my cinematographer and see if, and I, I have a phenomenal cinematographer on Jerome that, that really took the time to make sure that every, every stage, right, every location, we had nothing um, that was really blocking our actors. Very yeah. few lights. That that way, when they could interact with them, the the other actor, they could just they could do whatever they wanted to do, um, and know that that they were being well lit and looking wonderful. But the space was theirs. Yeah. You know, if they wanted to turn around and grab a glass and throw it, they could do that. You know, if they wanted to 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 just you know hide in a, and tuck in a little corner, they could do that. And I I really try to get them to just inhibit uh, uh, their like uh, this idea that they can't yeah and just and just go just like let loose and become the character uh, uh, let me just let's just be frank as well like I you know I, I you know for you from having a father that's incarcerated you know I also you know have a single mom who was always trying to be enough without having a father in our lives mm. and and I think my whole be like you know i've had films where i've stopped breathing all my senses just stopped because you captivated some moments in there that were so powerful and you made us all stop you could hear a pin drop there last night such powerful moments between a mother and son like how was how was that experience like seeing that on a big screen like i called mum balling up crying saying i love you after i watched your film like what was that like what has the experience been like for you to on so many levels just influence and support and educate so many out there because you flipping great job um thank you number one uh, that always means a lot you know um as a storyteller to be able to give something to somebody yeah. and no longer have it as like my own right? no it's you've universally given else. it to a soul yeah right um you know i i a lot of that collaboration is picking the right people yeah. um you know aries is a single mother herself uh i can't imagine what that feels like i grew up in the same way as you with a single mom and I don't think it's easy. It's not an easy charge. Um, I don't think the relationship is necessarily easy. I think no. sometimes it can be very tough. Yeah. Um, because they're wearing two difficult hats. They're juggling between them. You have a mom that's supposed to be, you know, these things that we believe, right? Soft, mm -hmm. uh, nurturing. And then you have this other hat that they have to wear where they have to be a dad. Um, and where do they find the time? Yeah. Right, like they. I think my mom worked like seventy hours a week, eighty hours a yeah, week. Same, yeah. Um, and at a certain point, you get kind of lost, right? Yeah. Like Sundays, she was exhausted. 
you know, it, I think we were like hanging out at home until about five o'clock and then we went to a movie theater and saw a yeah. movie every single Sunday. I don't think it was because my mom was like an avid cinephile, you know, I think at the end of the day it was because my mom was like, what do you do with a kid after you've worked 80 hours a week? I, I don't even have the room to think. Yeah. Um, let me find a space where we can just shut up yeah. for a little bit. Um, but that relationship is such a central one to me Yeah. of being able to look at somebody and say, thank you for holding on to me, for at a young age taking the responsibility and figuring it out. And I know it's not easy. And it's not always going to be like a cakewalk. Yeah. Um, but you're there. Yeah. And that matters a lot to me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I mean, <clears throat> listen, on so many levels, I'm so glad that, you know, you made this film, you know, again, incarceration is something we need to keep talking about. You know, in this case, you know, his, you know, his dad, you know, an, another black man incarcerated in this country. Um, but on top of all of that, Jim Franco, is that you really just rooted for all the single moms out there like you know and, and the hard work that goes into it and I just love the vulnerability that you brought to a relationship in the middle of a basketball court around their friends that that was such a powerful moment and well done thank you like, seriously thank you man. um yeah, it's, just, it's just hot in here we're getting emotional here <laughs> but it's all very genuine and that and that is a credit to you and what you brought to the film what is what is the experience been like taking this around like this must be a breathtaking experience because you've, you've got people you know being nominated for awards like you've, you you know how has that been for you uh, uh, deeply deeply affecting I think you know I, I was mentioning this a little bit last night but it's hard in an industry like this where it's as competitive as, as it is I mean it's like the most competitive right um, and it's also the most subjective like yeah. what is good I, I have no idea. Yeah. Right. Um, I I think it's easy to question your choices. You know, it's easy to question the story. Mm -hmm. It's easy to question a lot of angles. But when you give it to the world, there's no more questions. There are only answers, and you can't do anything about it except accept mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And the gift of of this film for me has been watching audiences at ABFF in Miami, or here last night in New Filmmakers, or um, over at Martha's Vineyard, and see when people light up, and see when there isn't a sound in the room, yeah. and hear a couple of like those audacious sighs that you know something else is there too. Mm -hmm. um, and then watch the people come up to me afterwards and say, I felt every feeling. And um, it's hard to do that in 15 minutes. What more can you ask for, though, can, right? right? Like, it's, you know, credit yeah. to what you created. And, and, and it's so nice that you tell us where this story came from and, like, you know, what's arisen from it as well. Um, what is next for you? What, how, how do we go? How, how do we go from Jerome? What is next for you, Jabrango? Man, it's, uh, I, I, just, I just graduated the AFI Conservatory. And, Congratulations, um, Thank man. you so much. And... Um, I, I did a, my thesis there, and it's called When Big People Lie. I'm very excited about it. It's a film about drowning. Uh, it's at the heart of it, really, about like a kid seeing his mother marry an immigrant mm -hmm. for money, right? Mm -hmm. He gets paper, she gets money. It's, mm -hmm. it's that, and, and that's kind of an interesting uh, world to kind of see from an eight-year-old's perspective, yeah. um, especially if that eight-year-old really hates lies, you know? Uh, but like a lot of my work, it's it's this triangulation between like a, a, a kid, you know, innocence and uh, a, a mother mm -hmm. um, that it has all of these hats that they're wearing as a single mom, and uh, and then this third kind of stranger figure, which a lot of times for me is either a father or another man that comes in and plays kind of a pivotal role, um, uh, whether they're absent or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's like uh, I'm really excited about that. But you'll 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 see that coming out here in 2024. Um, I, I've got. Uh, should I say all the things? You can say as much as you. I'll, would you like. guys just cut around. You yeah, know, yeah. Well, well, you guys figure it out. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'll trust you guys. But I, I've I've got another short film that's premiering over at the Louisiana Film Prize called oh, Dead nice. Flesh. Oh, yeah. great! 
That one's a little uh, creepy. Uh, <laughs> it's like a hybridized storytelling. It. It's uh, about toxic masculinity, but how it's cultivated. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, unlike Jerome, um, sometimes it doesn't always come from men. Sometimes yeah. it's cultivated by women. Yeah. And in this case, it's another um, mother-son relationship, but yeah. a little more uh, hybridized narrative documentary. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I'm most excited about, <laughs> the thing that I'm most excited about is this feature that I'm, that I'm writing. It's called Ghost in the Solarium. Um, it's about this kid that is dying to find his innocence that was taken from him. And he does that by stealing someone's identity oh, right? wow. and buys a house. And in this house, there's a solarium. Anyway, this is like crazy because they actually call them this. You know, people that steal people's identities that are dead, they call them ghosts. Oh. Isn't that crazy? It happens. Wow. Oh, it's a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, go even further. And on, on an international level, yeah. people come from other countries. Okay, they they like swoop into some place like Puerto Rico. They go over to like the cemetery, and then they snag somebody's name because Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. And they just oh. they then have this access to the U.S. that they didn't have before because they were international. And, yeah. You know, they didn't. They're like, how am I gonna ever become American? Yeah. And boom. They go to the cemetery and they still someone's identity. Anyway, it's I'm excited it, for that. It's, oh my, amazing. it's crazy. It's yeah. a crazy film, and once they go into the solarium, they become children. But they can only do it for a day, and he wants to do it forever. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Well, whatever world you're taking us into, I'm 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 ready for it. Like my goodness, it's stressful. Is, <laughs> it's, it's stressful. It's great for us though, so we we, we appreciate. It. I mean, I, can't, I still quite believe, can't quite believe that you know you're about to just make your thesis. You're making your thesis, and that's it's unbelievable that you've got all this experience as well, and all the work that you've done and together. And you know, I re you obviously uh, you know you, you really care about people, and even just the way you just interact with our, our our lovely crew here. And I'm just curious for where you've become just to finalize. Like, what advice do you have? in your experience thus far, the filmmakers that just want to follow in the essence of, of your footsteps? I'll say this, be creative in the ways that you want to make your stories happen. There's not a lot of people that want to, to give you the money to do it, mostly because you don't have a track record. You just, they don't know what you can do and they don't know how to really work with you in that space. But if you just had that attitude, I'm gonna do this no matter what then you have something that you can show them. And then once you have that thing that you can show them, stuff begins to happen. Mm. Whether it's they give you money or you find grants or whatever that is, be creative to find the, the ways to tell the stories that you want to tell. Absolutely, we don't hear that enough. Thank you very no, much. Well, yeah. Franco, thank you for being here. Thank you for your, your, always your artistic vision. Thank you for bringing Jerome to us. and. We love having you part of the New Filmmakers LA family. So thank I you love it. Much. I'm thank so you. happy to be a part of the New Filmmakers LA family. <laughs> Always, it's the best. Man. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Jim Frank, everybody.